Hello. Well, today I'm going to be talking about a franchise that uh, it's been a while since I talked about, but then again, the only latest news is a lawsuit, and since things don't seem to be going in a direction we'd all like to know or really hear about uh, regarding future films being made, um, yeah, not too much information has been given, but uh, that is, of course, uh, Friday the 13th. Um, but I'm not going to talk about this set. Um, I've never really talked about this set anyway, but uh, yeah, uh, because there is a completely uh, brand new set released by Shout Factory under their, uh, you know, Scream Factory title. Uh, or a little label that they give to horror films. Um, yeah. There's a... This paper, which talks about the kinds of films, like new scans of the film and first time ever you get the unrated version of Jason of um, if, uh, Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday um, that was originally here but uh, it was going to kind of come off so I just took it off and it also comes with this cool little book uh, talking about the series and uh, this is an incredible set um, yeah now, people have had some complaints about this set regarding uh, parts 3, uh, 9, and 10. But if you go to the uh, uh, Shout Factory website on the Friday the 13th uh, uh, part of it, uh, where you can order and everything, you can find out where you can get disc replacements um, Friday the 13th. Part three, you know, it's all, it was in 3D, um, and the 3D is not working for many people. Uh, uh, part nine, Jason goes to hell. Um, that film, uh, there's a scene on the unrated version of this um, where somebody gets their wrist snapped. You're supposed to see like their bone like pop out some blood. You don't see that, you just hear the snap, and then that's it. Um, but the, uh, all the other stuff that was cut in the rated version, um, it is there, outside of that uh, moment. And in Jason X, there is uh, uh, a scene where he's killing the two camp counselors in the sleeping bags. You don't get to hear them say ow or anything like that while he's beating them you know, to death. Uh, you just hear a, like he's just beating them, like the sound effect of them being beaten, and other, other things of that along those lines. Um, now I uh, I have uh, definitely uh, signed up for disc replacements. Um, while I haven't uh, watched part three and three D. Um, because I'm not very... When it comes to 3D for me with films, sometimes I'm able to really see it very well, and other times not so much. And I found with the, the original versions of the release of the DVD and the Blu-ray, and including this Blu-ray set with the part three, with the red and blue, I found in a 3D for that film wasn't all that effective. Sometimes it was all right, and other times what was supposed to be in 3D did absolutely nothing. Now, I'm sure people can say, well, that's because, you know, it's in, you know, red and blue. Might not be perfect. Um, and sure, yeah, there is that. But uh, just in general, even with the new 3D, where you put the new glasses, even then I still don't really see 3D very well. You know, that just happens for some people. Some people can, like, half the time see what's supposed to be in 3D. Um, uh, and 
and then there are uh, the other half they can't. And then there are people who do see it in 3D, and that's you know that's cool and awesome. Though for me, the 3D, I've just never been too fond of it. I usually, if there's a movie in 3D, I usually purposefully, uh, if it's in theaters, I will see the 2D version instead. Um, and then when it's on DVD or Blu-ray, I will purposely not watch the 3D version. Um, but... I just wanted a new disc of that, just because, you know, why not? Um, it shouldn't affect my disc, you know, when I watch it in 2D. Um, but who knows, uh, even though it shouldn't. Uh, I kind of know my luck. Sometimes, when it comes to something like that, I like if, it, if there's something that uh, allows you for... And it's, this is for free, for disc replacements, if it's for free... You know, you should jump on it. And if I don't jump on it for that particular title, you know, I, who knows? I might be one of those people that just, unfortunately, because there was a problem with the 3D uh, version, which I probably would not really watch ever. Uh, you know, I would experience other problems with the disc. And, yeah. And if I ever wanted a replacement disc for that film, well, then I'd probably have to pay, and it's like, yeah, that wouldn't be, that would be unfortunate, uh, having to pay time, years later, for a problem I could have avoided, um, yeah, but outside of that, um, those, uh, problems, this is an incredible set, uh, the, the, the 13th, uh, little thing here, has two bonus discs. This is 16 discs total. Parts one has two discs for the uncut and uh, theatrical version of the film. Uh, Jason Goes to Hell has um, the uh, the unrated disc and then a theatrical disc, and then there's two uh, bonus discs here. On the second disc, you can actually find some more stuff for Freddy vs. Jason and the uh, the Friday the 13th reboot, because these discs are actually just um, repackagings of uh, the original Blu-ray releases. If you've ever gotten those on Blu-ray um, years ago before th the first box set here, um, and I can just show you for a moment for those who don't know. Um, yeah, all, the, all of these other discs, um, like this one. Play with this, part four. You know, here's that, and then here's the disc. Pretty much, you know, like this, just smaller. Also, many of them, um, have alternate covers, like that. Um, some don't. Some don't have alternate colors, or covers. Six through eight do not have alternate covers, unfortunately. And some of them, they don't really have a difference in the, the, the cover itself. But in terms of uh, the back. Uh, and that is for like uh, like this and, the, uh, and some of the other films. They have different uh, backs and uh, fronts. So you can switch them out if you like. No. But yeah, you saw that and how it's pretty much like that. Well, yeah, this is just the normal Blu-ray disc you would have normally got on its own. But with Freddy vs. Jason, I never got um, this on its own or anything. Anytime I ever found Freddy vs. Jason on Blu-ray, uh, it was always packaged with... Uh, uh, Friday the 13th reboot and the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, like a three-pack. Uh, so that's interesting, I thought. I thought, um, But yeah, it was just the normal original Blu-ray release of that film. And, uh, and the original Blu-ray release of this film. Um, quite 
I think a bit more obvious too. Um, and here's the alternate cover for this room. It's just the hockey mask. I don't know, I kind of like this better, but that's me. Um, I think for the most part I'll just leave the covers as they are. Uh, there aren't too many that I think would be kind of cool looking just to get it like this. Or uh, switch it out. Um, that's me. Everybody's different. Um, one thing I did find out that's interesting is uh, one of the special features that was supposed to be on part three is not on part three. And that is the, the special feature of Legacy of the Mask, which they talk about you know, Jason getting um, uh, Jason getting the hockey mask. Instead, it's on the first bonus disc here. I thought that was interesting how, um, but I believe what happened is, uh, maybe they thought that would just be a more interesting, uh, uh, bonus feature for just the entire set in the specific new bonus discs, as opposed to how originally the part three, um, uh, Blu-ray on its own, and then later with, the, this original set here. Uh, included it with part three. Uh, but I think it's interesting just how, uh, right there, yeah, the Legacy of the Mask is not on here. Um, I, I noticed that when first watching these films, because I would always, after watching it, I would go and look at the bonus features on these discs. You know, there's new stuff, and there's uh, the older stuff, too. Um, and it's, uh, pretty cool and pretty awesome. Um, but I thought that was interesting how it's still mentioned on part three, but it's on here um, in the bonus discs. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, special features, new interviews with, uh, uh, with Harry Manfredini, and new location feature at and there's a bunch of documentaries and other things. And there's uh, Friday the 13th Chronicles. Like all the, uh, there was a box set originally of the first uh, eight films. Uh, and uh, and that bonus, and there was a bonus DVD, which actually is included here. And all those special features are on here. You have every, if you buy this set, you have every single, like, uh, all the films and all the bonus features with the films individually, as well as on the bonus discs. Uh, you get a combination of new and old special features, and I think that's awesome that they put all this uh, in here. But, um, you know, Shout Factory, Scream Factory, you know... They pull out all these great stops. They put out such great, uh, they go all out, just sort of like how Criterion does. You know, I talk about Criterion quite a bit on this channel, but uh, Shout Factory, Scream Factory, really, they have outdone themselves. Um, I never got the Halloween uh, box set for a couple reasons. One is, um, while I like Halloween, I like the franchise, I don't know, I've never been that huge of a fan. You know, whereas with Friday the 13th, I, I just love it. That's just, that's my franchise. Um, which you can even see here. And also there's Freddy, because why not? Um, but also the other reason I didn't get that box set is because uh, I actually had all but two of the films at that point. Uh, on Blu-ray, so I like sort of like, sort of like up upgrading, and then just before I, you know, got the other two uh, films that I didn't have for that series, uh, it was then announced that the Halloween, all the Halloween films would be released by Scream Factory, Shout Factory, and I thought, yeah, of course, finally get the, like most of them or all of them 
on Blu-ray or getting close to all of them on Blu-ray, and then a new big box that uh, comes out. Um, and it's always interesting too, with, uh, especially with uh, getting rights to films like, you know, Shout Factory and Criterion are great with that. Um, some companies, you know, there's multiple companies that own certain uh, films and franchises. You know, Friday the Thirteenth, first eight films, Paramount, they produce and release them. Uh, nine through eleven, you know, Friday vs. Jason's new line. Uh, but Friday the Thirteenth, the reboot is Paramount and New Line. Paramount handled international distribution. New Line handled uh, domestic United States distribution. Um, so it was kind. Of, it was quite cool to see them come together and uh, make a film. Uh, but you know that was only one film. Um, and also earlier this month they had uh, this. For its 40th anniversary, uh, released, re-released in theaters, and I saw this on the big screen, and it was fantastic. It was really awesome to watch um, on the big screen because I never saw it before on the big screen. Um, so that was awesome. It'd be cool to see any of these others on the big screen. Um, uh, for me. Uh, Part 4 is my favorite of them all. Um, and as I was watching these films like every night, sort of reaffirmed my favorites of them. Like first, it was like number uh, 4, and then 6, and uh, 2, and so on. I've never really been a huge fan of Part 5. Um, I know many people like that film and enjoy that film. That's great. You know, I even love it. Um, but I don't know. Um, uh, though I do think Part 9 is the weakest of the whole franchise. Um, he, or the film, there seems to be a lot they're trying to do, but, and, you know, and, like, there was so much that the people making it wanted to include, and yet, you know, I don't know if, time but then again the director of that film said the original cut which was like over two hours was really talky and sort of slowed things down but I guess in that version it like things made more sense but the problem is it's too talky there's not enough you know uh, kills which is what you want when you see a Friday the 13th film or a film with Jason Voorhees which he's only he bookends the film Spoiler alert if you've never seen that film. Uh, but yeah, you got body hops between people. Um, uh, but in, uh, while I'm not a huge fan of part five, I think there are some interesting ideas that film has. It's just, uh, for me, it just didn't really, you know, it was not executed well. Uh, and I'm not going to get into it why I think that, because uh, I've been thinking in the course of making these, uh, or watching these films, and then thinking I'm going to make a video of this set, and my general impressions, and which are positive, um, and even the disc replacements, even though there are some problems with them, the action of what Shout Factory is doing to fix the problems, and then sending discs out, and then we'll and when they're being shipped, they will send an email out to you. I think that's great. Um, now, people don't know what, um, why that was. I don't know. Um, I would think, uh, some said it was probably like rushed, but something like this probably was in the works for some time. Uh, you know, and, um, yeah, it would probably have to be get all this into one big box set like this. Um, yeah, but, um, yeah, I'm thinking about what, just talking about this set in general, and, uh, yeah, I was thinking, you know, maybe sometime I can talk about all of the films 
sometime. Not this year, but maybe next year or another year after. Uh, I don't know. I think I need some a little bit of time after talking about this and just my. I I really want to make sure I absorb all of it. I mean, I've already watched the special features and everything, but I will probably rewatch them again and again. And I just want to make sure uh, I I ha enough time has gone on to where when I begin to make videos about each of the films, I can now give more uh, of a, a perspective of the films uh, that is good, and not just sort of like, oh, I've done all these and I'm going to sort of rush into making uh, 12 videos dedicated to each of these films. I don't want to you know, do that. I want enough time to go on, you know, pass. So when I decide to do that and rewatch the movies again, you know, I'm able to have my thoughts more uh, have my thoughts more coherent, and not just potentially all over the place. Whereas after this, if I just decide all of the month of November and December, that's all I do. You know, I don't want it to be rushed in any way. Uh, but, you know, sometime in the future, I will definitely make videos of each of these films. Um, I've talked about my fondness of this series before already. Um, and that hasn't changed. Still love it. And even though I say, like, parts 5 and 9, for me, are the weakest, there's still something in those films that there's enjoyable you know part five uh, still has Tommy Jarvis uh, you know that trilogy's going um, part nine has some interesting uh, kills um, and while there are interesting ideas in nine it's just not executed well you know problem is like the long version of part nine, you know, like it's, it would be more explained, but it'd be, uh, I guess, too talky and not enough kills. So you condense and you leave out a bunch of things. So you, it's more faster paced and everything, but you lose quite a bit of information that will make quite a bit of sense. Um, and it's, you know, it's one of those things like it, could have been interesting, but then the whole body jumping thing, you know, it's uh, wasn't that great of an idea, uh, at least to uh, many fans. But then there are those fans who do enjoy the film, so that's great. Um, and same with Part 5. If you enjoy those films, if you love those films, awesome. Uh, even though Jason X and Jason Takes Manhattan are also seen as some of the weakest of the entries. Jason X is cheesy, but it's sort of like it kind of embraces the cheese that is there. Part 8 has interesting ideas too, and yeah, you get to go to Manhattan in this series, but then it's like most of it's on a boat, and that was for budgetary reasons. They couldn't spend too much money and time in New York, which was unfortunate. Uh, and there's also the you know, question of how they even got to New York anyway, but, you know, hey, it's a film. Sometimes it's like, you know, suspension of disbelief. Uh, I think that can be equated in this series, especially with that film. Uh, but there's also some cool kills and interesting stuff that happens in Part 8, too, uh, which is entertaining. Uh, but yeah, this is an incredible set. It's probably one of the best sets Shout Factory has ever made. Um, I remember years ago, uh, I sent a message on Facebook. 
I don't know why on Facebook I thought, uh, but I did get a quick reply back from them, uh, it, which is, uh, you know, how it'd be cool to see a box set of the Friday the 13th films like they did for Halloween, and they said they would love to, but at the time, you know, with the rights and everything, they didn't have any plans. This was back in 2018 or so. And, you know, with the whole lawsuit, too, that probably would have put a halt on things. Um, you know, that's all understandable. Um, but a few years later, here it is. It's an incredible set. I enjoy this set quite a bit. I will... Most likely, this will be my go-to uh, set for viewing the franchise here on out. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this. It's out of print, uh, but also it's just a cool collector's item now. Part 9 was just the rated version, unfortunately. didn't have the uncut uh, version like Part 1 did. But, hey, and there's a cool booklet and a patch and stuff. It's, it's a cool set for what it is. It was a nice sort of, like, I guess this is a nice... Uh, starter uh, set of, uh, for Blu-ray of all the films. Uh, and, you know, kind of paved the way for this set. Um, but, yeah. And I did send an email or a message like it's just out of curiosity of um, uh, Freddy vs. Jason in the Friday the 13th reboot of you know, how the, the the discs and everything are pretty much the same as if you bought uh, bought those films individually on Blu-ray some years ago. Uh, and if that was done on purpose, or if it was they were supposed to, you know, have new menus and the Shout Factory, Scream Factory logos appear before the menu or anything... You know, the films work, and they, the special features work. Nothing wrong there. Uh, but it was just something I was just curious about. Um, I don't know if anyone else uh, had similar thoughts. Uh, if so, maybe not to the degree of wanting to email them, but uh, I did. And if I get a uh, response that I think is interesting, uh, I might share it here, or I might not. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is an incredible set, and uh, I love it, and I'm glad Shout Factory is doing their best to fix the issues people have had with the discs, so they can get them replaced. Just to, just demonstrates how great of a company Shout Factory is, and especially for doing it for free. And yeah, this box set isn't. Uh, really cheap, you know, wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get it, I didn't get it with the poster like so many people did, but, um, and the poster just did look cool, but, uh, it was a, it was a sort of a bonus item that if I didn't get it, I would not be all that upset and disappointed. I could live without the poster. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I really... Uh, enjoy this set. The films are fantastic. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm glad to have my favorite horror franchise on Blu-ray and individual discs, not having to take them out and hope that they don't get scratched or anything. And all of that, which people had complaints with this original set, Yeah, and um, all the special features, if you're interested in that. Yeah. It's all incredible. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, with all that said, uh, in the future, I will be talking about these films individually. I don't know when that will be, though. It might be a cool summer thing to do, like in the summertime. Uh, just thinking of that. So yeah, 
anyway, um, I hope you all have a great day. Hope you all have a great weekend and a great week. I'll see you all next time. Bye.